Hi, I'm Eric Rolon. Welcome to the Tough Love Nephilim series. Today we are going to be talking about the Amalekites. But first, if you haven't already, please smash those like and subscribe buttons and hit that notification bell. Also, if you like the work that I do, please consider donating to my Locals page. Donors get exclusive access to all my research papers as soon as I get them uploaded, with endnotes included, and your support is greatly appreciated. All links you'll find in my description down below. All right, let's get into this one, the Amalekites. Now, historically, the Amalekites were a Canaanite tribe that lived in the Negev, which is the semi-desert region of southern Israel. The two areas within the Negev that they occupied were called Kadesh Barnea, which is on the border of Edom, and Shur, which is on the eastern border of Egypt. Edom was the land of Esau, and was on the east side of the Arabah, extending from the head of the Gulf of Aqaba to the foot of the Dead Sea. Strong's link H6002 has Amalek, dweller in a valley. A. Son of Eliphaz by his concubine Timnah, grandson of Esau, and progenitor of a tribe of people in southern Canaan. B. Descendants of Amalek. Strong's link H6003 has Amalekite. C. Amalek, people of Lapping. A. Descendants of Amalek, the grandson of Esau. Now, Smith's Bible Dictionary renders Amalekites this way. A nomadic tribe of uncertain origin, which occupied the peninsula of Sinai and the wilderness intervening between the southern hill ranges of Palestine and the border of Egypt. Number 1329, 1 Samuel 15.7, and 1 Samuel 27.8. Their wealth consisted in flocks and herds. Mention is made of a town in 1 Samuel 15.5, but their towns could have been little more than stations or nomadic enclosures. The Amalekites first came in contact with the Israelites at Rephidim, but were singly defeated, Exodus 17.8-16. In union with the Canaanites, they again attacked the Israelites on the borders of Palestine and defeated them near Horma, Numbers 14.45. Saul undertook an expedition against them, 1 Samuel 14.48. Their power was thenceforth broken, and they degenerated into a horde of banditti. Their destruction was completed by David in 1 Samuel 31-17. Easton's Bible Dictionary renders the Amalekites this way. A tribe that dwelt in Arabia Petraea, between the Dead Sea and the Red Sea. They were not the descendants of Amalek, the son of Eliphaz, for they existed in the days of Abraham in Genesis 14.7. They were probably a tribe that migrated from the shores of the Persian Gulf and settled in Arabia. They dwelt in the land of the south, from Havilah until thou comest to shore. Numbers 13.29 and 1 Samuel 15.7. They were a pastoral and hence a nomadic race. Their kings bore the hereditary name of Agag, Numbers 24-7 and 1 Samuel 15-8. They attempted to stop the Israelites when they marched through their territory, Deuteronomy 25-18, attacking them at Rephidim, Exodus 17-8-13. Compare Deuteronomy 25-17 and 1 Samuel 15-2. They afterwards attacked the Israelites at Horma, Numbers 14-45. We read of them subsequently as in league with the Moabites, Judges 3-13 and the Midianites, Judges 6.3. Saul finally desolated their territory and destroyed their power, 1 Samuel 14.48 and 1 Samuel 15.3. And David recovered booty from them in 1 Samuel 30, 18-20. In the Babylonian inscriptions, they are called Sut, or Sute. In those of Egypt, Setiu. And the Amarna tablets include them under the general name of Kabati, or plunderers. Now, Easton was both right and wrong about who the Amalekites descended from. The first time we encounter the Amalekites is in Genesis 14, when they, along with several other tribes, are conquered by Chedorlaomer Mare and his confederacy of kings. We know from Numbers 24-20 that the Amalekites were a progenitor Canaanite nation. Numbers 24-18-20 reads, And Edom shall be a possession. Seir, its enemies, also will be a possession, while Israel performs valiantly. One from Jacob shall rule, and will eliminate the survivors from the city, 
And he, the prophet Balaam, looked at Amalek and took up his discourse and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his end shall be destruction. Now, Amalek was the son of Esau's son, Eliphaz, and his concubine, Timnah, Genesis 36, 12. So, it's understandable that the Amalekite region of Kadesh Barnea bordered on Edom. Now, Amalek's mother, Timnah, was descended from Seir the Horite, Genesis 36, 20-22. And given Timnah's lineage, the second wave of Amalekites to inhabit Canaan were officially an offshoot of the Horites. Genesis 36, 20-22 reads, These are the sons of Seir the Horite, the inhabitants of the land, Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anna, Dishon, Ezer, and Dishan. These are the chiefs, descended from the Horites, the sons of Seir in the land of Edom. And the sons of Lotan were Hori and Hermon, and Lotan's sister was Timnah. Now, the Horites were another progenitor Canaanite tribe, also first mentioned in Genesis 14. In Numbers 13, when Israel's spies returned from their 40-day reconnaissance mission in the land of Canaan, they gave their report of the land and its fierce inhabitants. They identified the Amalekites along with the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, and Canaanites residing in the land as the descendants of Anak. Numbers 13, 28 through 29. The passage reads as follows. Nevertheless, the people who live in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. And indeed, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Amalek is living in the land of the Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites are living in the hill country, and the Canaanites are living by the sea and by the side of the Jordan. Numbers 13.30-33 describes the sons of Anak not just as people of great height, but as Nephilim. Numbers 13-33 reads, Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, We should by all means go up and take possession of it, for we will certainly prevail over it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, because they are too strong for us. So they brought a bad report of the land which they had spied out to the sons of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to spy out is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are people of great stature. We also saw the Nephilim there. The sons of Anak are part of the Nephilim. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. The Anakim were enormous, fierce, and powerful giants, as Deuteronomy 9 points out. Deuteronomy 9, 1 through 2 reads, Hear, Israel, you are crossing the Jordan today to go into dispossessed nations greater and mightier than you, cities that are great and fortified to heaven, a people who are great and tall, the sons of the Anakim, whom you know and of whom you have heard it said, who can stand against the sons of Anak? Anak was the son of the Nephilim Arba, Joshua 15.13 and 21.11. And according to Joshua 14.15, Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim. The Bible records nine battles or confrontations that Israel has with the Amalekites. Number one is in Exodus 17, 8 through 15, which they won. Number two is in Numbers 14, 39 through 45, with brief recaps in Deuteronomy 1, 41 through 46, 25, 17 through 19, and 1 Samuel 15, 2 through 3, which they lost. Number three is in Judges 3, 12 through 30. And this is one of several cycles in which Israel falls out of favor with God and is allowed to be tormented and beaten back by their enemies until God raises up a righteous person to judge Israel and defeat their enemies for her. Number four is in Judges 6 through 7, and that is also another cycle. Number five is in Samuel 14, 47 through 48, which Israel won. Number six is 1 Samuel 15, which Israel won. Number seven is 1 Samuel 27, which Israel also won. Number eight is 1 Samuel 30, which Israel won. And number nine is in 1 Chronicles 4, 41 through 43, which Israel won. 
There are also three battles or encounters where the Negev and its residents are mentioned, but the Amalekites are not specifically named. So, though it's possible that they were involved, we don't know for certain. First one is in Joshua 10, 28-43. The Negev is mentioned, and Israel won that battle. Number two is in Joshua 11, 1 through 23. The Negev is mentioned among 12 conquered areas. Israel won that one too. The third and final one is in Judges chapter 1, verse 8 through chapter 2, verse 3. The Canaanites in the Negev hill country are mentioned, and Israel won. The last mention of the Amalekites is in Psalm 83, in which the psalmist Asaph implores God to confound his enemies. And... 1 Chronicles 4, 41-43 tells us that the Simeonites wiped out the remnant of the Amalekites at Mount Seir. All that said, the Amalekites were definitively a Nephilim tribe. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.